When I first heard about the Sonos Era 100, I considered it as simply an upgrade to the Sonos One or Play One series. I have two One SLs in my home theater, and for a while, I used an old Play One we had in my office. These are great speakers, but they're no match for Apple's HomePod 2. Then I went out and bought a Sonos Era 100. My name's Eric Wielander, welcome to my channel all about creating an effective Apple smart home. So you might buy a speaker or any piece of smart home tech for that matter for one purpose now, but it's important to also consider the options it gives you down the road. Ideally, you can use a product like this for five or even 10 years, and it can move to different rooms in your home depending on your needs. The Sonos Air 100 gives you these kinds of options. Zooming in specifically to smart speakers, one of the key Key features of any smart home music platform is multi-room audio. This means speakers in multiple rooms across your home are all playing the same music perfectly in sync. Sonos has been doing this for longer than anyone in the business, and it's the most reliable in my experience. The Sonos One is a great speaker to add to another room in your multi-room setup. You can use it with Sonos for this or with Apple AirPlay grouped with HomePods or other speakers. It's also pretty flexible where you put it. Well, the Sonos Air 100 is about an inch taller than the HomePod 2, it's not as wide of a diameter. Given this size difference and the fact that these speakers have their speaker parts toward the front of the device, they're more suitable for being placed in smaller spaces. The HomePod tweeters are all around the speaker, which kind of demands that you place it away from the wall. You can pair two Air 100s together now or in the future to create a stereo pair. I got a second Air 100 and I paired them in my office and it sounds amazing. The difference between it and a stereo pair of HomePods is really down to stylistic preference, but I think Sonos has edged out Apple's HomePod 2 here, and it's up to Apple to come back with some software or hardware updates to make it better. A pair of Sonos Era 100s is also $100 cheaper than a pair of HomePod 2s. Spend that $100 on a HomePod mini, and you have everything musically that HomePod offers and more features with the Sonos side, albeit losing the elegance of two speakers with Siri built in and the ability to pair HomePods with an Apple TV for Dolby Atmos spatial audio and TV audio. Speaking of Sonos TV audio, you can alternatively move this stereo pair of Air 100s to be rear channels with a Sonos soundbar for a TV setup. I haven't done this, but I bet it would sound great. I currently use older Sonos One SL speakers for this. You can also add a $20 dongle to the USB-C port on the back of these speakers to connect anything that uses a headphone jack like computer speakers. Sonos really intends this aux in to be used with a turntable for records, but more on the computer performance in a minute. Don't let the 100 in the name fool you into thinking there's a single tweeter. The Air 100 has two tweeters that are angled to the left and the right sides. This technically gives stereo sound out of one speaker. While the stereo separation is okay, it's still from a single speaker, I just think the extra tweeter helps add some more detail to the sound. The woofer is also 25% larger than the Sonos One Gen 2, which turns out means you get more bass response. You can actually hear it. It's obviously no match for something like a Sonos Sub Mini, but it gives a noticeable addition to the bass sound for a speaker of this size. Sonos has also redone the touch controls on the top of the speaker, just like on their new Era 300. You can swipe the sunken in track to persistent adjust the volume, as well as the usual tapping on capacitive button areas to adjust volume and other settings. I don't tend to use the physical controls on my Sonos speakers, but these do seem like a nice upgrade. One of the key features on Sonos speakers, including the Era 100, is you can completely disable the top controls if, like me, you have small children who might touch them when they aren't supposed to. Like the Sonos One, this ships with a microphone that supports Sonos Voice Assistant and Amazon Alexa, but not Google Assistant, at least at this point. I find Sonos Voice Assistant to be a great way to control Sonos speakers and play Apple Music. I made a whole video about it previously on my channel. The requests for Sonos Voice Assistant are processed on your Sonos devices, and it seems to have the same emphasis on privacy that Apple has with Siri. If voice assistants aren't your thing, you can flip the physical switch on the back to mute the microphone. You also don't have to enable Amazon Alexa at all. So if you don't like Amazon smart home tech, don't consider 
this equivalent to getting another Amazon speaker in your home. There's also Bluetooth 5.0 in these speakers for quick pairing to a phone. Just hold down the button on the back to connect it. This isn't going to give you the audio quality of using the Sonos app, but it's very convenient. With the Aero 100 and 300, Sonos has left off the ethernet port that's included with most of their past speakers. But these speakers do boast Wi-Fi 6 for connectivity, which is nice to help with wireless range and reliability if you have a Wi-Fi network that supports the newer standard. As an alternative to the $20 USB-C audio in adapter I mentioned earlier, you can get a $40 adapter that goes into the same USB-C port and includes audio in and ethernet. So the Sonos USB-C line in adapters are hard to find right now. They're sold out a lot of places and the one I had on order was delayed a little bit. So I actually was able to get the Ethernet Plus audio in adapter and try that for this video. And I was very impressed with just that you plug the adapter into the speaker, plug the audio in, into in this case my Mac, and it just works. But I noticed that the audio levels were very low, too low to really use the adapter for day-to-day -day use. So there are actually a couple settings you wanna change in the Sonos app to get this to work properly. The first is your source level, and this means how much is the Sonos speaker going to amplify or set the volume for the audio coming into the speaker from this adapter. And in my case, it was set to the minimum setting by default, and there's a recommended setting for Mac computers as well as PCs. I ended up opting for the highest output, which is called high level 10. And that worked great for me because I like to have my Sonos speakers a little bit on the quieter side for day-to-day -day use. So I didn't want to have to turn the volume way up on those to get it to work well with my Mac. The other thing you want to change is the audio delay. Mine was set to the maximum setting of 2000 milliseconds by default. And I changed it down to the low setting, which is 75 milliseconds. And with that, it seemed to sync up perfectly with any kind of video on the Mac or video conferencing. But one exception to that, is that every so often, I would say about once every five minutes, you'd hear the stereo pair just kind of get out of sync for just a second and then get back in sync. And it was generally not that big of a deal. Like I could live with that, but it's just something that would gradually drive me crazy. And I hope Sonos can maybe fix that in software updates. I also imagine that if I hardwired both of my stereo pair to ethernet, maybe that would help address some of the latency issues. I don't have enough ethernet ports and adapters down here to actually try that. But that said, it made all the audio on my Mac sound great. Using it with a video conference with lots of different people in lots of different settings on their end, everybody sounded clear and I could hear them well. Of course, the microphones on the Sonos Aero 100s are used for the voice assistance and they're not sent in through this adapter. So you'll need to use whatever microphones you have on your display or your computer for that. Well, I liked the performance of this and I think it's great that Sonos adds this as it gives you more versatility in using the speaker in more places, like let's say with a turntable or other audio in. It's not a solution with my Mac that I'd wanna use day to day for my computer sound. So I'm gonna stick to using the speakers built into my Apple Studio display for day to day sound for my Mac for things like video conferencing. But at the same time, I'm gonna keep my Sonos Air 100s here on my desk for listening to music or podcasts or whatever other kind of audio I might play while I'm doing work. And I think if you have a Mac and you're trying to play audio to your Sonos speakers, always keep in mind that you can also use AirPlay to do that. If in a pinch you wanted to let's say live stream a concert and play the audio on your Sonos speakers, you can always use AirPlay there. The one other advantage of the line in adapter is it gives you the option to pipe that audio from the line in to other Sonos speakers in your home. And you can even set it up to automatically do that when you set the line in as the input source. So that's a really cool feature, especially if you have something like a turntable where you might wanna play some music across different Sonos speakers in your home. But that said, that's a totally different use case in my opinion than what I was looking at with using it as my computer speakers.
If you've seen any of my videos on the Lutron Caseta lighting system, you've probably heard me talk about how handy Pico remotes can be. Lutron actually makes a Pico remote just for controlling Sonos speakers. You just pair it in the Lutron app with the speakers in Sonos that you want it to control. It's a little slow to make adjustments compared to other ways to control the speakers in my experience, but it looks very classy and almost anyone can use it. One key feature is that the center button on a Sonos Pico remote cycles through playing your Sonos favorites on the speaker. Favorites are any playlist, album, or radio station, or other music source you choose as a favorite in the Sonos app. This can be a great way to quickly put on music for a specific situation, like working or a dinner party. The Aero 100 brings detail to lead vocals and instruments that you don't find in many speakers its size. In my experience, many smaller speakers struggle with Brahms cello sonatas. It's easy to muddy the low sounds of the cello and lose all the detail or to cut out all the booming bass of both the cello and the piano. A pair of Sonos Aero 100s bring the Rostropovich and Serkin recordings to life in just the right EQ. For rock and pop music, well, it has strong bass for the speaker size, the sheer physics mean it's not going to thump the bass and drum like a larger speaker. You can always pair it with a Sonos Sub Mini to add bass if you need it, but that's a hefty addition to the price tag of the setup. The speakers also don't separate out all instruments in a recording in the same way that a HomePod 2 or a bigger Sonos Era 300 will. The Era 100 also lacks spatial audio support. With two main tweeters facing forward though, the Era 100 speakers bring the detail of the music right to you in a way that I don't often hear. While a HomePod 2 separates out the instruments, it also makes the music feel more distant and not as loud at similar volume Level. Ultimately, sound is a personal preference, but I don't think you would be disappointed by the performance of the Aero 100 for its price. The Sonos Air 100 is an incredibly versatile speaker, and it sounds just as good as the $50 more expensive HomePod 2s for sound quality and gives you the flexibility of using the Sonos system for playing music or Apple's AirPlay 2 with HomeKit. Getting one or two Aeros along with a HomePod mini gives you almost everything you want on the Apple smart home side while gaining the options of Sonos with different music services, Lutron Caseta Remote, Sonos Voice Assistant, and many other smart home integrations that Sonos has. I would love to see Sonos add support for Siri as Ecobee did with their thermostats, but I don't know if that's ever going to happen. I would also love to see what Apple could make in more speaker sizes and options. Apple clearly has a talented audio team, and while the HomePod 2 is exceptional, I think Apple could provide alternatives to challenge Sonos in more home audio configurations. If you live in a Syrian Apple-based smart home, you can't beat the convenience of speaking to a HomePod, but if you listen to lots of music as we do, Sonos speakers are well worth the investment as they play well with the rest of your Apple home. On top of that, Aero 100s give you lots of options for where you can put them as your smart home needs inevitably evolve over time. Links to the products mentioned today as well as following me on social media can be found in the description below the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already Thanks again so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.